Well, folks, here we are again. I've, I've done a few of these candlesticks and I wanted you to see just a bit more close up what I'm doing because it's hand positions and all this kind of thing that are important, aren't they? It's not to say that my hand positions are the only hand positions that you should use by any means. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying it, it helps to see. You have to, if you like, copy any technique that you see somebody else using and make it, make it your own technique. Okay? So, we're about making these. Okay? This is half a pound of clay. Now this is the point where you, you get it a nice shape like that and then you've got to split it. So half goes outwards and half stays in the middle. It was actually quite easy. All you do is that. You see, you just push down. What could be easier? The only thing is you've got to make sure, of course, that it is on centre. That is vitally important. You do have to push in quite a lot with this finger here from the outside which because it, it is actually if you look at it here you notice it's a narrow and uh, quite a narrow foot and, the, and there, the reason for that is of course that the overhang here enables you to easily pick it up. It's user friendly isn't it? You can pick it up you haven't got to scrabble around or drop the thing drop melted candle wax on your toes <laughs> in the middle of the night so but this this candlestick or candle holder It's for use on the table or off the wall. And I did think that a candle you see that's put against a white wall reflects quite a lot of light out into the room. So it's, it's not a bad idea to have it so you can put it to the wall. Now the size of this hole here in the middle, now the one I'm looking at here, I'm doing it very slightly different in so far as my, my hole, instead of being just a vertical hole going in like that, mine is slightly, is very, very slightly tapered. In other words, it's wider at the top than it is right down in the very bottom. Because if you have a, if you have a tapered, slightly tapered hole, you can take different size candlesticks. At least that's my theory. Because I don't know what the standard, no doubt there is a standard size for a candlestick, but I don't know what it is. But I'm just doing it. Alright, so what do we need to do now with the stick underneath, just to of course, a gentle undercut because we don't want to have to be fussing around with these and trimming them, do we? Talking to you, all you trimming addicts out there that love your box of tools and all your different. <laughs> it's all right. Don't don't worry about me. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna do this. Now I made a mistake there, I made a mistake. What I should have done is done that first and then cut it. But I cut it first. That's okay. Next time I'll remember. I'm gonna lift him up, put him on the side and another. Now you see, 
the reason that I can take this that somebody else has made and I can make it myself pretty much without much fuss is because I've learnt I've learnt the foundation how to distribute the clay make make cylinders well okay and that's taught me so I can now take pretty much any shape I see and I can reproduce it I can I have the ability to do that why because I've been practicing that's why that's all no big secret just practice so this is a nice little a nice little thing to be making at this time of year in your home to put on the table to have against the wall in your living room maybe and a season a seasonal a seasonal thing isn't it a candlestick a holder So leather wheels going around too fast. Slow it down a touch. Don't like these wheels that keep going so fast on me. And we'll run away with you. They run away with you. Okay, now we're going to flatten one side so it can go against the wall. And it it has a a hole put through there of course for the for the nail or for the hook. Next, dry your fingertips, you see, put him down, one more, good to be on the wheel again. Very much like making lids for certain kinds of, you know, like a coffee pot or something like that. You make, you make, you make lids like this. This is, this is the knob here, you see, for lifting, for lifting the lid. Maybe let's just bring that bring that camera angle down a little bit. Might be good. Just so you get a more of a sideways. A little bit more of a sideways angle anyway, not a big amount. Okay, there we are. A little lower angle for you. But I want to put I'm gonna put my stick in. I'm sorry the camera's on the wrong side to see, but I'm going to do some videos on using, using, using your stick, because I think, it's 
a lot of um, scratty pots not finished off properly on the bottom and um, it'd be good to hit that on the head wouldn't it know how to really finish the bottoms of your pots off I think a lot of people when they're finishing off the bottoms of their pots they think to themselves oh well it doesn't really matter I'll trim it afterwards the trouble is you see that's the enemy the good becoming the enemy of the best isn't it all right so let me just maybe flatten that a little bit like that okay now I need to do that that thing on the side don't I here so you just do like that, that you see and just bend him upwards and and then we we take him and we we put him over there sorry about this tripod folks it makes such an awful noise I'm gonna to have to get another one I can see all right there we are folks so there you see the repeat thrown candlesticks so Simon says, keep practicing. <laughs> See you in the next clip. Bye-bye.